Oh, Paris, what a beautiful sight you are. Your streets are full of history. Your bakeries are filled with croissants and baguettes. Your cheeses are as smelly as the bottom of my feet after a long day of work. You are beautiful. But let me tell you what a pain in the ass it was to get here. <laughs> Now I work for a pretty big company and when I mean big, I mean BIG! A couple of years back they were opening offices all over the world, you know, expanding and I got the lucky draw to go work at Paris. So meetings and conferences are held, tickets and hotel rooms are reserved. Wait a minute, how am I gonna tell my wife that I'm gonna be in Paris for 12 days? Yeah, Alex, how are you gonna tell your wife that you're gonna be in Paris for 12 days? How are you gonna pull that one off? <laughs> tell you guys the truth, he went over smoother than I expected. Anyways, back to the story. So I meet up with my co-workers at the airport, and we grow up by tweet. For some reason, whenever I find myself at an airport or a location like that, I have to eat. Don't ask me why, it just, my body says, seafood, go eat. So we grab our first flight to Boston, and we arrive to Boston and everything is fine so far. At the Boston airport, we decide, hey, let's go grab some lunch. Yeah guys, we're eating again. I'm gonna eat again. It's something that I do. I like to do it. Hey, what are you gonna do about it? And what do you want from me? It's a six hour flight from Boston to Paris and God knows what the heck they're gonna serve you on the airplane. I mean, if you've ever been on a flight that long, you know that all they're gonna serve you is bird food. So this is where the story starts getting interesting. For lunch, I order a bacon cheeseburger plain, fries and a soda. We eat our food and we start heading towards the terminal. We still have about an hour and a half to wait until we board the plane. About an hour passes after lunch, and I'm still feeling pretty full. I'm not talking like, oh my god, I just ate the look back to you type of food. No, no, I'm talking Chinese buffet, Brazilian steakhouse. You ate about six pounds of food, and you can't feel your legs. So I know something is definitely going on here. This is not how my body reacts, but I just ignore it and move on. So we board the airplane, and I have a window seat. And next to me, there's a couple, you know, a, a man and a wife. And I have a co-worker sitting on the aisle seat. We're having a conversation. The man turns to me and offers if I want to sit on the aisle so that I can be next to my co-worker. Uh-uh, uh, sir. This is my seat. I like my window seat. I don't give up my window seat for nobody. So the plane takes off, and about 30 minutes into the flight, I'm still not feeling right. So I turn to the guy and beg him, please, do you mind? So you can sit with me, I don't want to be bothering you and your wife, you know, standing up and down. So we switch seats and, you know, everything is fine so far. So 15 minutes after switching seats, I'm still not feeling right. I look to the back of the plane, there are two bathrooms and they're both full. I look to the front of the plane and there's one bathroom and it's available. So logic tells me, get up and start walking. But don't forget that barf back. Look at it, it's right there. It's waving at you, it said hi, grab it. So I grab the barf bag and I start moving to the front of the plane. But as I'm walking, my body starts doing something completely unexpected. It starts opening the barf bag. And another thing starts happening. My stomach, my stomach starts pumping. Not pumping iron, I mean it starts pumping itself like a pump. So I speed up to reach the bathroom, you know, to get there on time. But right as I'm getting to the yellow line, it happens. <laughs> It doesn't just happen once, I continue doing it. The liquid levels on this bag start rising and I'm not stopping. And of course you get people's reactions in the back. Oh my god, he's vomiting. He's sick! Quarantine him! Put him in a box! And naturally the stewardesses come to help me out. They give me a bigger bag and I head into the bathroom. In the bathroom, I clean myself up, and as I'm about to head out, something unexpected happens. I have to drop pants and go snake eyes. Yeah. It doesn't stop there. Hey guys, thank you for joining me on this story. Sorry I'm going to cut it short on this one. Um, it's a bit long, and I don't want to take up too much time. So I want to thank everybody that has subscribed to the channel. A big, big, big thank you to Infamous Swoosh. Link is on the bottom to his YouTube channel. He helped me out. He made a tweet and a bunch of you came over and subscribed to the channel. A big thank you to all of you. I promise I'm working on the second part to this, um, to this story. And it will be out as soon as I finish it. 
maybe a week, two weeks. Remember, I'm very limited on my time. All right, guys. Laters!